Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes as this sleep inducing recording may induce sleep yeah and if you watch it on YouTube please subscribe and maybe leave a comment telling me how amazing I am I'm always I'm always up for that I like to hear wonderful things about myself <laughs> or you could tell me if what I'm doing is useful that's really what I want to hear um, what else oh yeah if you would like to support me if you like what I do okay you if you benefit from what I do you enjoy it whatever and if you'd like to support this free service that I offer, then please, uh, you can do a couple of things or you can do all of them. But one of the things you could do is you could send me some money via PayPal. Um, even if it's a $1 donation for each recording, for anyone that listens, it will help to pay towards the cost, the running cost of this free service which at the moment is about £100 a month plus ish um, if you go to my website I've got it listed what the costs are and there's a, a donation link there but it's actually paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland there are other ways you can support me. You could share this recording. You could share the podcast. Um, tell your friends. Share it on Facebook. You could, uh, you know, share the YouTube video. Thanks, Andre, for sneezing. He's in the background. I want to tell you about Andre today. Oh, he's on the naughty step. He really is on the naughty step tonight. Um, anyway, if you want to help, there's different ways you can help and support me. I'm aching a little bit, but again, I'll tell you why. It's because of Andre. I just want to tell you about Andre really, I don't want to bother talking about the supporting me thing. But yeah, it, you could leave reviews on the various podcasts, because I'm on lots of different podcasts. Oh, I'm trying to get comfortable. Uh, um... So I'm on uh, what Spotify, Podchaser, Stitcher, blah, 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 blah. iTunes, SoundCloud. I'm you know on lots of different uh, podcasts, lots, as well as being on my website. Um. Yeah, so you could just because I've been I do <laughs> this could sound really really a bit strange. This might sound a bit strange. What I do is sometimes no, I'm sorry, I won't do funny voice. Uh, what I do is I do Google myself. Not always my name, but I like Google the. Bore, bore me 
money to sleep and you know, see what other people are doing similar kind of things uh, it's only one other person that I can see that was doing something similar to this but before me and this is an American I think or Canadian man and I realise that's a faux pas to say that because the, but I don't know I'm just saying it, it could be from New Zealand you know he's from somewhere but not England he could be from England but just moved to a place with uh, an American accent you know at an early age I, mean, I don't know I don't know his story I don't and I think his name's Drew D-R-E-W and he's very successful he's got a very popular podcast it's been going for a few years got four or five years maybe and I discovered it after I started doing these so I didn't copy and what I do isn't really well, I suppose it is very similar but it's not if that makes any sense it's kind of like we, we, just, we do things different it's like saying all singers are the same we, that person's singing Oh, but someone else is singing. Why would you want two singers in the world? Like, yeah, people sing differently. Would you know? So he sings differently to me, and I do my thing. He does his thing, but his is really successful, and he's got a Patreon page, and you know, he's got a lot of followers, and he's making quite a bit of money from the looks of it. So that's really cool. Oh, what else? Oh, this, there is someone I discovered, another one, a podcast. But they started this year. They started in January. And it was like a boring podcast thing. So I'm just wondering if it's going <laughs> to... I kind of hope not, because that's just going to... It could go badly for me if, if it became trendy to start making these kinds of uh, recordings podcasts because there might be a lot more people out there <laughs> that are just so much better at it than I am and you know some people might have actually been influenced by me to do it, who knows I know that people have told me that they've been influenced by me to get into hypnosis and to make hypnosis videos and stuff like that they t actually told me this um, in the past so but can you imagine that imagine if there's suddenly a big loads of people coming out and doing boring boring podcasts to send people to sleep and it's just me and I'm and everyone's so much more successful it's just me and I'm like trailing behind and and I was in second place <laughs> and now I'm like trailing far behind and it's not fair no or it could go the other way more people could get interested in it and they discover me so who knows I don't know a bit like with the AMRS ASMR rather ASMR videos on YouTube you know there wasn't many people doing it and then suddenly loads of people did it and it became huge which well, still is but it was massive wasn't it for a while really and some of the people that do it now still they 
post a video and within about two or three hours I've got you know 40,000, 50,000, 100,000 views. It's like, wow. I did get into the ASMR videos. I really did. Uh, it's because someone asked me to do it. About 2011, I think it was. They said, I think I'd already done it. I'd already kind of done it a bit, or we've done a bit of whispering, but not as an ASMR, just as a more as a wind down. So I'd be doing like a relaxation session or an insomnia session, and I'd be talking, and then I get quieter and quieter as the as the time went by, and then near the end of the recording I'd be like whispering like this and, and well, I wouldn't be saying these words of course but because uh, that would be weird but it, I'd be like and then you feel relaxed and sleepy blah 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 you want to eat a cheese sandwich you have a tail You know, that kind of stuff. You know, useful things. And I I started making a few and they were popular. Not like as popular as the ASMR popular people. But I was getting thousands of views at the time. So that was quite a, quite a weird thing. And then I started thinking, well, and I got a little bit distracted over the years. I'd, the only thing I wanted to do was chronic pain relief. That's the only thing that I wanted to do when I started this. Um, well, when I, when I got involved in hypnosis, that is it's the only thing that really interested me. And, you know, in 2006, I started the free pain relief service. And I used to visit people in their homes and then I rented a room. And, you know, so it was, it was going good. And then people wanted more different things. You know, they wanted, oh, can you help me with this? I've got a phobia. I've got different things, you know. And... I wanted to help, you know, just generally wanted to help people, so I kind of said, yeah, all right, you can come along for that, we'll, you know, see, and I found it fascinating hearing um, the processes that people go through, the brain thinking process of a particular issue that a person may have and yeah it's kind of it's a little bit well I'm only guessing here but I I imagine it's a very kind of it's like being a like an engineer you know trying to figure out the mechanics of like a most really complicated machine or like a mechanic, yeah, a mechanic, uh, engineer, mechanic, or scientist even. It's just, you know, figuring something out and maybe where uh, to put the screwdriver or which which bit needs to be replaced or uh, maybe needs, you know, like with plumbing, which bit needs to be pl- plunged. It, I don't know why that's funny, but yeah. 
so um, I got into when I put yeah so it's a pain relief and I kind of moved away from the pain relief and when I was doing the volunteering at the rehab places I was one a drug rehab and an alcohol uh, charity and I was doing these relaxation sessions groups leading them and people were saying well it's nice to speak, see you once a week or twice a week but you know they said can you make a CD for us to listen to at home you know, want something we can take home with us and listen every day so I thought okay I just heard the weirdest noise it might be an Andre but it sounded like a like a bird or something. Like wah, wah. Oh, I think it is Andre. I've got to tell you about Andre in a minute. Mr. Naughty Step Man. <sighs> anyway, yeah, I started making these CDs. I basically just took a, an audio recorder in with me and I started recording all the, all the sessions and chose, chose one with you know, the most uh, quiet background. And then I started making CDs, handing them out and these got more popular and they kept running out of CDs. So I started putting them on the website as MP3s so people could just stream them or download them. And that's how this kind of started, all the online stuff. So I started off, and I thought, well, they're on my website, I might as well just share them. What happened? I thought, well, I'm going to share them on MySpace. Because I started making videos as well. And I thought, okay. Let's see what happens here. And MySpace loved me. Not everyone, but I got a lot of real positive support from people on MySpace. And it was all mainly about people on bands and singers. And you know, that's what MySpace was really around. Um, I know it was the precursor to Facebook. But lots of you know people. I think the first video I did got about ten thousand views within quite a short time, which was mind blowing for me at the time. You know, two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, whenever it was. I was like, wow, they really like me. And I think it was the first one was like a ten minute relaxation. It was in black and white video. And then I just made some more. And I had a podcast as well, which was a big free podcast. It was, I think it was actually called freepodcast.com, something like that. And... I was, you know... I think I had something like 100,000 downloads on there before they closed it in about 90, no, 2008. So yeah, it was, things were going well there, but then they closed it because it was free and they couldn't keep it going. Like, why didn't they just charge people? And... But then what happened is people started asking me, oh, 
why don't you do, can you do a sleep session? Can you do a sleep recording or sleep video? Uh, okay, because I was, I was doing the chronic pain ones. That's what I wanted to play. I was doing relaxation because that's what I'd already started doing with people. And then I thought, now I can do chronic pain, which is what I want to do. And then people are asking for the sleep sessions. And they're the ones that are always the most popular. And the... I did a record, I did a video in 2000 and... I think it was 2011. Uh, and it was... Uh, the hip, not was it the sleep challenge try and stay awake challenge and it's been my most popular video always you know every time I upload it onto a new channel like YouTube channel or something it always you know, ends up getting thousands of views It's kind of weird, really. Well, not weird, but it's just popular for some reason. Um, I don't know if there's any point for me telling you that all that stuff. It's just... I'm feeling nostalgic, maybe. I don't know. I think one of the point I was making before is there are other people doing the sleep sessions but not not many doing this you know like proper proper boring talking and And I do wonder maybe if I found my niche, as it were, and whether I should focus just on this. However, the deep sleep whisper, hypnosis recordings, are still the most popular ones out of everything I do and now the, the let me bore you to sleep are growing in popularity and it's taken a year to get to where I am now with these so I wonder you know in another year's time they might, this might be the most popular podcast out of all of them. Really don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Hard to know what's going to happen. <sighs> A little drink there. So I would like to, like to at least plan something you know plan um, some kind of I don't know don't want to use the word business but something where I can just go forward and not have to really think too much about stuff like money or any of those things. I don't mean uh, you know, I've still gotta sort that stuff out and, you know, look after myself but I think if I had If I had ten thousand pounds 
a year. Guaranteed for the next four years or three years. I could stop being unemployed. Because £10,000 would cover all the basics. You know, it would cover the rent, cover bills. You know, it wouldn't leave me with anything to do anything or go anywhere, but it would leave me, it would cover the very basics of what I need to get by. And on top of that, I could then start to ask for money, ask for donations a bit more, and sell some products on the website. And then eventually, I reckon after a year or two I reckon I could probably be making that 10,000 a year so I wouldn't need that help anymore and then after a couple of years later I probably would have added another 10 grand a year to make it up to about 20,000 a year which would then give me a like a basic living standard. Bearing in mind, you know, tax has to be taken off and all that stuff. And then just build it from there. And then by the time I'm 90, I might actually, <laughs> I might actually have a nice, Big nice table full of coins. I'll be rich. I think it would be nice. I had a. a I want to say thank you to Michael for a donation that I received. I've already thanked him, but I thought I'd like to thank him. Um, publicly like you know actually on on a recording because I know that he listens to these and he actually did leave me a message or comment on my website a couple of weeks back which was really cool and um, so he gave me a donation but he did and I should this, I'm going to say this directly to Michael now I didn't receive your email that you sent via, or the comment, the message you sent via my website, because I found out that the the message was they're not they weren't being passed on because I wasn't paying the nine dollars ninety nine a month to pay for that service on the website which is kind of ridiculous amount of money just so to be able to receive emails. So that's why it didn't. And I, was, I kept sending myself emails trying to figure out why is it not coming through. And that's why. So I'm going to... I'm going to re-look at... I'm going to revisit the whole website thing because I don't think it's very practical... Unless I'm actually going to sell stuff, there's no point in me being on Shopify. I might as well just get a cheaper website host. But I don't want to keep using different website hosts. I want to stick with just one. I've had so many over the years. And... I don't want to really put that much effort into it. 
the good thing about Shopify is I can put a product for sale so easily and Shopify do all the work all I've got to do is produce the product upload it upload the artwork and you know all that stuff and then it's available so you know that's kind of something that I'd like to do more of but I can't do that while I'm unemployed I can't I can't sell stuff and unless I'm a business at the moment I'm asking for help to cover the costs of the free service that's a different thing um, so I don't know there's got to be I started to kind of really think about it and think well you know maybe this is what I need to be doing and maybe maybe I have found my my niche and maybe sleepy stuff you know sending people to sleep whether it's with the wisp of recordings or whether it's with these or both perhaps that's something I need to maybe accept that that's what I'm here for you know maybe that's that's my kind of purpose is to help people just to fall asleep and to just be boring <laughs> maybe I don't know it's I would still like to do other things I don't want to just I don't know I like the idea of making more recordings of different things really that's just what I like to do I like to be creative and, and there is something quite nice about creating something out of nothing and that's what this is you know this was this recording was nothing until I started talking it still is nothing really but you know you know what I mean and the let me bore you to sleep now this is like 115 recordings and over a year and it's like wow that's probably 120 hours plus of me just yabbering on Yabba 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 blah 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 wah 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 So I find it quite I'm thinking I'm thinking of writing a book and um I'm thinking I'm thinking thinking of that book being this is just the equivalent of what I'm doing here. So let me bore you to sleep. Book. And I could, uh, I suppose, I could do it. There's different ways of doing it. I could transcribe the recordings and then write a book from them. You know, do like a, the best of or just some of the stories or just you know whatever rubbish I've come out with or I could just do completely fresh things uh, whenever I say fresh things I think of farting it's weird isn't it other people might think of but like, cooking you know let's have some fresh food you know so or maybe uh, to rejuvenate their relationship maybe to uh, you know to get 
remarried, you know, redo their marriage vows. Let's refresh our our relationship. I just think of farting when I think of the word fresh. Anyway, um, 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 so yeah, I suppose I could write a book and just write it fresh, you know, just actually I don't know what's let me know, let me know what you think if you're still awake, if you haven't fallen asleep yet then let me know what you think what your ideas or what you would like although I have to be a little bit careful about what I ask people because oh, it was it was not not this month not last month it might have been last month it was this year though I think it was in 2019 so it was either January 2019 or February 2019 but I'm pretty sure that it wasn't March 2019 but I think I posted something on Facebook asking people what would you like me to talk about in the let me bore you to sleep recordings or is there something you'd like me to discuss or story or you know and I had a couple of people ask me to, you know, gave me some ideas. Three or four people gave me some ideas what they would like me to do. And I tried to do one of them and I just couldn't because I was laughing. Luckily it wasn't live, so it was just a recording. But I just... For some reason, when I start telling a story, because I think the this was um, a story about, I can't remember what it was. It might have been about some pigs or... I don't know why pigs come to mind. It's It, it could have been a story about a cow I don't really know there seems to be a farm theme going on um, maybe it was a talking jacket we had a smoking jacket but what about a talking jacket you know the kind of jacket someone wears instead of wearing something when you smoke they wear it when they talk so it doesn't actually talk, or maybe it does talk, or maybe it's a talking jacket, but it smokes. I don't know. Just, just making stuff up now. Sometimes I get little flashbacks of old dreams that I've had years ago that didn't didn't mean anything then. Not really sure why that is. I don't suppose it really matters, but today I was I had an appointment at the at the university to that like an open afternoon or open evening. I think it was four thirty onwards or something, and it was for the postgraduate degrees and I'd had it booked for I think two weeks just realised about an hour ago that I didn't go 
Well, no, he just like forgot all about it completely, totally forgot all about it. And it was today, well, yesterday rather, Monday. And just it went out of my mind completely. And I spent most of the day in bed. But I was just like, why? Why did that just leave my mind? Why? I don't. I don't know why. Very strange. Yeah, very weird that. So I might wait and see if there's another opening day or, oh, I don't know, really not sure. I mean, what would be the best way to do a book? Would it be to have chapters with a different story for each one? Because I suppose reading something would be different to listening to something. However, you know what I've noticed, or well, you don't know because I've not told you yet, but something that I've realised about me anyway doesn't mean it's the same for everybody because not everybody's the same but what I found is when I read a book by and I know the author yeah I know uh, what they sound like then I read that book in their voice I mean, it's not going to be perfect, you know, because I've, I've not heard anybody say every single word of the language, you know. So, but it's still kind of in their tone of voice. I suppose it's more tone. Yeah, tone. I'll give you an example. Um... I will do in a minute when I can think of one. Who have I read? All right, okay. Like Charles Bukowski. If I read a Char I've got a few Charles Bukowski books. If I read a Charles Bukowski book, I will hear his voice. I didn't used to because I didn't used to know what his voice was like. Um, because when I first started reading his books, it was in 1992, I would say. Yeah, probably, maybe 91, but I'd say probably 92. And I was really into uh, the beat generation, poetry, and... Although Charles Bukowski didn't really fit into the Beat Generation as such, he was known by them, and you know, is uh, he kind of was just a legend, legendary writer, American writer, as well as being, you know poet as well so if you've never read any of his books then I do suggest checking them out because also I liked his poetry was it Ryan Ham was one of them and he, a lot of his books were produced by Black Sparrow printers I do believe if my memory is serving, 
something up and so I had a few I don't have the I mean, most of my book collections I don't have at all but I had I had pretty much I'm not going to say I had all of his books but I had a lot probably I probably had about 80% of the books that he produced including the poetry but I didn't keep them and I re rebought probably about six of them uh, a couple of years back um, he had one of the book what, what did he do he did a thing called like a trilogy and what was it Post office, women, and was it factotum? Oh, that might be wrong on that one. That might be a different author. I think it's factotum. But he did women. He did post office and women, and he also had another book called diaries or Notes of a Dirty Old Man which were short stories but it's it's very adult you know it's adult kind of content but it's really you know it's always very funny um, but it's uh, I think it wasn't until probably in 95 that I saw I don't know if I was in either Virgin or maybe in HMV in London but they had an album of Charles Bukowski that's like a him live, not in concert, but doing. Uh, there was one that's like, yeah, he was reading his poetry to an audience, and then there was, I think, another side where he was reading his poetry just to himself, kind of. And. I don't know, quite. I was taken back by how he sounded because it didn't sound how I thought he sounded. But there's no way of knowing how someone sounds, and back then, you know, there was no YouTube to watch videos of him and to gain a, you know, some kind of idea, and, you know, he was wasn't even around anymore at that point so so I couldn't have gone and you know visited him to hear him there was a, a book no sort of what's his name there was a, a film called I think is it Barfly which had Mickey Rourke in, who played him as a character. He played, it wasn't Charles Bukowski, but Charles Bukowski called himself Hank Chinaski in his books. So he referred to himself as Hank Chinaski. And, uh, yeah, surprised I remember so much about it. I've read a f quite a few of his books and I think after reading his books I kind of got an idea of how I would like to write you know it would be very much more in the first person talking from a 
I suppose in a sense like a Pulp Fiction uh, kind of uh, book kind of way you know the original Pulp Fiction books where the detective would be saying oh no, I did actually oh yeah it's gone now it's, it got lost in the internet but I made this recording where I told a story and it was like a detective story it lasted for about an hour maybe an hour and ten minutes and it was good it was funny it was very very silly um, but some somewhere along the line I lost it I lost it while I was doing it because I was laughing but I think that was about 2012 but it, it got lost if there's anyone out there that remembers it and saved it then let me know I'd love to hear it again it was just a bit weird it was uh, it's just very silly but I quite like the idea of um writing you know kind of in the first person that sort of appeals to me and maybe I don't know just talking about what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking at the time and I'd like to be able to just quite like to be able to walk down the street you know and say into my phone you know record what I'm thinking and what I'm doing you know and what I'm thinking as I'm doing it the problem is there's people around and it might look a bit silly you know as I'm walking up to the the counter of the supermarket to pay for my I don't know whatever I use to bleach my pubes I'm saying oh and as I walk up to the counters I look around to see if there's any attractive <laughs> if, there's a, if there's any attractive uh, members of staff working so I can chat them up and maybe you know just have a little bit of visual pleasure for the for the day but then as I walked towards the counter, I could see that it was just, just a, an elderly lady who just didn't look very happy really. With, didn't look like she was very happy with her job. and Maybe it was because of the big hairy mole she had on her side of her face and then you hear in the recording saying are you going to pay for that sir <laughs> then she asked me if I'd like to pay for the it's like, you know it's like that it just, it'd be sound rude wouldn't it imagine if it's walking up walking around saying yeah I'm looking at a man and a woman they're walking past me now and I do wonder how come He's got a girlfriend and I haven't. And I thought, you know, that could cause a lot of trouble, couldn't it? It's like, uh... So here's what happened. Andre wanted to go for a walk. Okay. Andre 
yet again. It's no surprise there, Mr. Mr. Demanding. Take me out, take me out, Daddy, all the time. So I thought, okay. And this was late. This was half 11. And I thought, okay, I'll take you out. Why not? We'll just go for a little walk. And we'll come back. So we cross the road and he goes in and out of the railings where the school is. And there's this basically a fence that goes all the way around the school, which is probably goes up to about my chest. And he goes in and out of the railings and then just comes back and, you know, just rubbing himself over everything. just heard some weird sounds then well this time the chain on his collar because he's got a, a harness with a lead and the lead snapped off because he tangled it around the railing and he was on the other side of the fence, which is the school side. And he ran away in the dark towards the school and the school field. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't obviously couldn't leave in there the fence was all locked up I couldn't get in other than by jumping over it so I went to jump over it and that didn't go very well I ended up on my back and then I did hurt myself but nothing too serious And I get up and I can't see Andre anywhere. And I'm listening out for him and I'm kind of calling his name, nothing. And then eventually I hear something in the bushes and I grab him and, you know, I've got him. Go to put the lead on and I didn't, at this point, I didn't realise the lead was snapped. I thought he'd come out of his harness or something, but. The lead is broke. Then I realised that I don't have my glasses on. My glasses have fallen off with the fall. So when I jumped over the fence, my glasses have gone flying somewhere. Not literally flying, but you know. And I thought, oh great, so I could not find them. And I was looking around, like, for somebody. Because it wasn't just a case where I couldn't find them. I had to find a way over the fence. As well as hold Andre at the same time without hurting him. So I had to stuff him down the front of my jacket so that he couldn't get out. And find a way to get over the fence without squashing him eventually I found my glasses and I waited I thought surely someone will walk past nothing nobody anywhere I just needed a hand literally that's all I needed just a little bit of help to get over the fence I could have you know just something and I was stuck over there for about 15 minutes. I was like, oh. Oh, 
was just like, what am I going to do? I can't stay here all night. That's going to be a bit weird. I live across the road. I can I but then I discovered a way out. And I, I kind of, I found something to hold on to and I managed to get out, but I think I bashed my leg on the way out of that. So I've got a gash in my shin and a sore shoulder and who knows what I'm going to, you know, what I've bruised. Just because Andre wanted to go for a walk. It's, I know it's not his fault, but... Oh, I couldn't believe it, seriously. It was like, so just like, what on earth? What on earth? Like, how am I going to get over that fence to start with? And I did it and ended up, luckily, you know, I was still conscious, but I ended up on my back, flat on my back. I still managed to get, yeah, I got home anyway. And here I am. That was the original story I was going to be telling you. So there you go. Now I've got no harness for Andre now because the the thing's broken, so I can't take him out. I can't believe how flimsy the the lead is. It might just be how strong he is, but at least he's safe. That's the main thing. And that's the whole recording done. So hopefully you were as bored as I was with that. I'll see you next time.